a.k.a. Best Bell Bonds. Big game coverage live from Las Vegas. Powered by Southern Recipe Small Batch Pork Rinds, Synergenics, and 94.1 San Antonio Sports Star. Hey, everybody, huddle up. We got something to talk about. This is the morning huddle. He is RJ Ochoa, the managing editor of Blogging the Boys. I am Rob Thompson, the bespectacled professor, and uh, we promised him to you. Let's dive right in. He is Dan Marino. You know all of who he is and what will be, and he's sitting with us right now. It, it, I'm uh, kind of aghast. Okay. Mr. Marino, Dan, well, thank it's a you, pleasure. Bud. Thanks yeah, for no, stopping glad, by, man. No, glad, glad to be here. You guys... Uh I know this is a hectic time for for the radio stuff here on Radio Row, but it's it's kind of fun. Dan, I got to get out right away. Obviously, all the football accomplishments are you know priority. Bad Boys Two, though, super underrated. <laughs> That's my all time favorite movie. Okay. So to meet the star of it is really uh, a treat well, no, we can't well, go too can't, far. Yeah, I mean, better we, role. We'll submit, yeah. Bad Boys Two, Ace Ventura. Uh, Ace Ventura's got uh, it. Yeah, see, oh, yeah, he I got mean, him. He had meat on that role. Yeah, exactly. That was my best work ever. <laughs> I feel like I made Jim Carrey a star, which I did. Think about what you did. You managed to catapult that guy to the stratosphere. It's those little things that matter. It was great, man. It was great. That's good stuff. So, Dan, what's the week been like? Obviously, everybody's here. There's a lot of yeah. energy. Uh, they're hopped up on various things. Uh, you know, different things, whatever. But uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I just got here last night, and uh, I'm going to do some uh, corporate stuff here and obviously doing uh, the work with Eminem. Um, uh, Almost Champions ring that I'm doing a commercial for, and uh, uh, Bruce Smith's in it. You know, he was in four and didn't win, and T.O. was in a couple. And then uh, also our special guest in the commercial was Scarlett Johansson, which I thought was pretty now, cool. Now, she's she in because great. she was nominated twice for the same in the same year and didn't I get it. Is that so. why? Yeah, yep, yep. That's pretty uh, much uh, what it is. Well, that's the uh, worst thing to ever happen to you all. You're, you're kinda, I, it's working out pretty well for all four of you guys. Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, it's not, no, but then, anyway, so, yeah, here promoting that and uh, uh, that they did the ring. And, um, no, you say the this, ring. They the, did yeah, the M&M's ring. you got to talk about this you ring. You are really exactly. underselling. I saw an Instagram ad for this ring, and we knew yeah. that you were coming on for it. And I was like, is he going to be wearing the ring? Like, I was all... Oh, no, they got the ring. The ring's at the M&M store so in Las Vegas. It's a so solid gold ring. With diamonds in it. Uh, but the diamonds chocolate. are made out of peanut butter? Like, uh, it's a, it's manufactured diamonds that yes. have been made that were lab out of peanut grown, butter uh, that you uh, would get out of an M&M's? Yes. Peanut butter M&M's. So and I guess you could eat the ring if you want to. <laughs> I uh but it, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that at all. <laughs> I value my teeth too much, but I would eat and will eat these M&M's. It's on display here in Vegas at the M&M's yeah. store here in town. Uh, everybody and also wants- like for more information, I know we just yeah. you got to do this, but if you go to M&M's mms.com and uh, slash Super Bowl. Of course. Then you can get into all the other stuff they have and they have like these sweatsuits that you could buy and be a part of it and yeah, so it's it's, it's Can I win cool. the ring? Uh, can you win the can ring? Can I win the ring? I don't or think is that, there, uh, can I meet Scarlett Johansson if she has the ring? Yes, we well, can do there, that. She, okay, she, that's she, like we, one. We could definitely do that. All right, fair enough. Yeah. And we have to ask you, quarterbacks? Sure. Yeah, talk, compare want. and contrast are, are the two quarterbacks that we get to see this weekend. Uh, say it again? Compare and contrast. What do you, you, what do you see in Brock Purdy? What do you see in Mahomes point. likes things that you see? Well, I mean, Mahomes is as good as it gets. Right. And he, he is uh, – a special player has been a special player since he came in the league, and and uh, the things he can do throwing a football, uh, you know, it's just incredible. And he and he's a winner. Uh, he's going to be tough to beat in this game because he knows how to win Super Bowls. He's done it before. And Brock Purdy is kind of a it's a neat story because I just love the fact that he's a you know he's an underdog guy. I'd love to see him win. Actually, you know, he's an underdog guy coming in last last pick in the draft, and the little cool thing with me is this i guess i got a i got a note that said uh that brock purdy's dad was a dan marino fan right you know when and when he was growing up and they watched tape and stuff like that so it makes and he was wearing 13 of so, course so now you know besides my m&m's ring in the super bowl purdy's my favorite guy now that's interesting <laughs> <laughs> but that i think the 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 story of Purdy has been so lost in people trying to figure out how good he is and how good Kyle Shanahan is and whatever. It's his second season in the NFL. I mean, you know what it's yeah. like to have high levels of success so early, and obviously Mahomes is the kind of modern-day king of that. When you're that young and you are experiencing those things, I feel like it would just wash over you. You're almost too naive to understand what's at stake. Yeah, is, that a, realize, is, is that a fair way well, to look uh, at it? That is definitely fair. I mean, because... You know, I played in the Super Bowl my second year. We broke all those records. We did any no one else was doing all those kind of things. And then we didn't beat the 49ers, who had an incredible team. 
and Montana, obviously, and a lot of other guys, Ronnie Lott, those guys. Uh, but I thought I would be back and playing that game again a number of times, and I was 20. I still may be the youngest quarterback to start in the Super Bowl. I don't know for a fact, but I'm pretty darn close. And uh, you just think you're going to be there. You'll be there. I thought we'd be going to next year, and it doesn't happen. So I think that's the lesson that a lot of these guys have learned over the years is, you know, you got to take advantage of the shot when you got it because you don't know what's going to come down the road in the future. On the subject of that, we cover the Dallas Cowboys, and Dak Prescott is the longest tenured starting quarterback in the NFL relative to his specific team because of Aaron Rodgers changing teams, things sure. like that. Um, and, and he's entering now year nine. And I have to imagine at that point you start to wonder, like, if it can't happen, it didn't happen when we were the one seed. It didn't happen when we had the bye. You know, you're, and you're kind of evaluating what has to happen. What are your thoughts on, on Dak given his exposure, you know, as a, as a Dallas Cowboys quarterback? Well, I like Dak as far as his ability and everything he's been able to accomplish in his career. And and, uh, and it's just that they just haven't been able to get over that hump. And, and it just takes that effort, extra effort, being in the right place situation as far as what the schedule is and how many you know what's the injuries i mean like for the dolphins for example we right we got hurt at the end of the year i mean it's just a fact like just like a lot of you know a lot of injuries and it was hard to overcome that so i mean that's just part of it and i think that will, he'll be fine i mean, no they're gonna they'll continue to can you know to uh compete and we'll see where it goes as far as him getting into a championship game and knowing the variables that get into winning a title, at what point do you, as a pro, do you start accepting the fact that I'm going to do everything I can, but it just might not work out? You know, I, I, I don't think you ever try to think that Good. because you, you, you think that uh, you can do it, and especially if you play, always played at a high level, that it could happen. Um, I think after when I retired, I did feel like I could play a couple more years. It just didn't. It just didn't feel right to where I could have went to Minnesota, could have went to Pittsburgh, like places like that. But uh, yeah, you do. You always think if you're putting the work in and you're doing right. the work, you think like you got a shot. You know, no matter what the circumstances are. So that's always that's always there with play. If, if you got a player that's worth worth uh, you know what he is as far as if he's a, if he's a good one or not, then. He's thinking about that all the time. He is Dan Marino, if you don't recognize the voice here with uh, M&M's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. offering a ring that we all have access to see at some point. You touched yeah. on the Dolphins, and it's interesting when teams are – successful in the same sort of way right like anybody thinks Dolphins success they think of you they think of offensive success it'd be weird if the Dolphins were like a heavy all defense team you know what I mean sure and so you look at Tua and you look at what Mike McDaniel has done and you mentioned that they just kind of fizzled out and caught some bad luck near the end do you think that next season they can finally break over the Buffalo Bills and if the Jets obviously come back with Aaron Rodgers I mean they're, they're on the cusp and they just need those things to kind of line up right for them too well you said it I mean you said it right right there it was they need to things to line up and at the end of the year there, we had opportunities, and I think you just got to grow from them. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, th- I would say every Dolphin fan, Dolphin player, anybody that's involved that would, would say you got to grow from that and understand that you got to be healthy. you got to have your right players playing at the end of the year when the games are very meaningful. They, they count so much. Uh, you got to have everybody ready. When you look at the style of Miami and McDaniel and all the offenses that we see around, and it's obviously, man, in my day it was this, and in this day it's so much easier. But when you look at the systems that are popular now, do you feel like that would be something that you would be that you would enjoy the RPO movement and that, that kind of yeah the yeah, game as it's changed? I mean, we, I could do it for but sure. But would you enjoy? Do you think I, I the success would, would come? Throwing, I don't know about throwing all the little yeah throwing it sideways all the time. Like that wasn't my game. Um, as far as all these bubble screens and RPOs, like you're talking about, so could I do it? Yeah, I definitely could do it. But uh, it was one, not one of the things that was even around that much, right. you know. And uh, you know, our throws were more down. I mean, we had always had chances, no matter what the play was, going down the field. So that that's a whole different offense. And and now they run more motion and more adjustment with players and and same personnel in the game, and they're all in different spots, and it's all. But it makes it uh, more challenging for defenses. Do you feel like you would have approved of how protective the league is of quarterbacks now? I mean, you fall down the wrong way, and, and there's 15 yards. You know what I'm saying? Like, that had to have been something that you, you look and you're like, man, life would have been a lot easier. It would have been easier, yeah. I, 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 uh, I kind of like it because <laughs> I think you want you, you want your star players to be in there and play in the game. And, and guys still, even though they have changed the rules, still, sure. guys are still getting hurt. You know I mean? It's not... It's just part of the game and how physical it is. So, uh, but I mean, it did change. Um, it changed, uh, you know, how how people played the game. 
and how you were able to put up some of the yards and completion percentages and all that that they have now that uh, probably wasn't there, you know, years ago. Mm-hmm. They were good, but not as good as you get now. The, st- the stats are better now. Right. Uh, Dan, MMS.com slash Super Bowl. Not M&M's, MMS. You know, just throw the, the and sign away. Or is peanut your peanut butter your favorite flavor? If M&M's? you were driving. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely peanut butter. Okay, I'm a peanut guy myself, but this is just, you know, this does have to work. You know what right. I mean? They just and dilute the it down. thing, if you're out in town here in Vegas to come to the Super Bowl, you want to go see the ring at the M&M's store in Vegas, you can go check that out, too. The process behind turning peanut butter into, you know, wearable jewelry is one I'm it's interested per- in. Yes, it was, yeah. Yeah, well, you, you, you're going to see it. Someday. It's a brave and bold new world. He is <laughs> Dan Marino. You recognize him from everything we'll else. And now with m ms Hey, thanks for stopping by, man. Yeah, it it is a genuine pleasure to meet thanks. a genuine legend yes. in the Bad boys, too, forever. Bad boys, Bad boys together, was was the together. platform. Dan Marino right here on the San Antonio Sports Star. Best Bell Bonds. Big game coverage live from Las Vegas. Powered by Southern Recipe Small Batch Pork Rinds, Synergenics, and 94.1 San Antonio Sports Star.